If there's one big thing that separates human brains from other animals' brains, it's the ability to think about our thinking, to really reflect on what we know and how we know it and how we might want to deliberately improve our knowledge or skills to better use in the future. This process of human self-reflection is called metacognition. And today I want to talk about how you can harness this unique gift to improve the way you study, get better grades, learn a foreign language faster, become a better guitar or piano or violin player, or otherwise excel at whatever you are trying to get better at. I'm Andrew with Brainscape, a mobile study platform built on decades of proven cognitive science research. And here, we know that metacognition is not just some Gen Z term for a lit new brain power. Metacognition is based on the fact that humans literally have more folded layers upon layers of the cerebral cortex than any other animal. Each one of these additional layers essentially allows our brains to think in one or two more levels of abstraction so we can deliberately improve ourselves through the process of self-reflection. It turns out that even the world's foremost experts on a particular topic don't necessarily know everything. They just have a more acute sense of what they don't know than novices do. Using metacognition can help you identify areas in your work where you need to improve. Metacognition can also regulate your emotions uh, or even anger or, or develop effective communication skills to support healthy relationships. Metacognition is one of the most important tools in our mental toolkits. So today let's look at three specific tips for improving your own metacognitive skills to boost your learning. The first tip is to get good at isolating the smallest kernels of your knowledge or skills that you feel still need improving. For example, you're learning a new song on the piano? Well, rather than constantly practicing the whole song from beginning to end, hone in on that one chord transition you keep getting stuck on and practice that 20 or 30 or even 100 times until you've perfected it and, and then you can move back on to the rest of the song. Alternatively, maybe you're studying facts for an upcoming exam or professional certification. Instead of just passively rereading your textbook or your notes from beginning to end, you're going to want to reflect on those concepts that seem hardest or at least most likely to be on your test and give them the old highlighter treatment at least or maybe write your own notes in the margin, summarizing the, the kernel of that weakness that you were having trouble remembering. Just somehow make sure that you are, are identifying that part that's really dogging you. And if you're a true study boss, you might even choose to identify those weaknesses by making or finding flashcards for them, ideally using a digital flashcard platform like Brainscape. The act of making flashcards itself is the perfect form of identifying your weaknesses because it gets down to the level of each individual learning objective in a question and answer format, which helps to set you up for our next tip for leveraging metacognition, which is to quantify your goals and track your progress. They often say in business that if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And it turns out that your knowledge is the same way. Sticking with our same example of using Brainscape flashcards to study, this might mean dividing your decks of flashcards in a certain way that aligns to your learning milestones, like chapters or lessons. Uh, and it might also mean that when you study, rating each flashcard's confidence based on how well you know it on a scale of one to five, so that Brainscape can determine exactly how frequently to repeat it based on your own personalized pace of learning, really identifying and repeating and attacking those weaknesses. This helps you easily monitor your progress and better allocate how much remaining study time that you might need. This is really the epitome of thinking about your thinking. But even if you're just 
practicing piano and not using Brainscape flashcards with the built-in one through five confidence rating and spaced repetition system, at least try to come up with a system to measure and track your progress, because that's still key for keeping that metacognitive monitor on your learning. Like, maybe you wanna record how many times in a row you can do a certain exercise without messing up, or the number of beats per minute that you're able to smoothly play a particular piece on piano. The point is, if you have at least some good way to visualize and track your progress, not only will you be able to continually isolate and attack those latest weaknesses that you might uncover, but you'll also stay more motivated because you're more aware of your improvements. Keeping, keeping track and having almost a point system for what you're gonna beat, it's almost like video game level motivation. My final metacognition tip is to seek feedback from others, particularly on areas where your confidence might be a bit shaky. For example, even if you're learning an instrument by yourself without a coach, um, then you at least want to gonna occasionally get feedback from a music teacher somewhere, maybe even virtually, so that you can correct your form or otherwise point out techniques that you might not know you're missing. Same thing if you're learning a language on your own, online, in an app, you know, whatever. You're definitely going to want to spend hundreds of hours eventually practicing your new skills with actual native speakers so that you get that constant feedback loop that makes you more aware of the concepts you need to work on more and less likely to start accumulating bad habits that you develop without such feedback. If you are using Brainscape to study, then you can use our nifty bookmark tool on each flashcard so that you could flag concepts you might specifically want to ask an instructor or tutor about at your next session, thereby helping establish a much tighter feedback loop with that educator, um, even if you're initially studying on your own. At the end of the day, learning deliberately is a mindset that can be trained. Even if you're accustomed to studying the old way, the passive linear way, you can train yourself to better reflect on and control your own learning process thanks to this unique human power of metacognition that we are gifted with. If you like the advice in this video, please subscribe to our channel, check out all the other great articles over at the Brainscape Academy, and remember that you already possess the right mental tools to rise to your challenge.